Please stand and turn to page 90 in the Moravian Book of Worship for the Easter Liturgy. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Sing this aloud. Proclaim it to the ends of the earth. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By God's great mercy, we are given new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Jesus was handed over to death for our sins. Then what can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or hardship? Can persecution, hunger, nakedness, peril, or sword? No. no. All these things we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. For we are convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers, nor heights, nor depths, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God.
Good morning. Happy Easter. So, uh, one of the things you know that we did during Lent was we locked up something. Anybody remember what we locked up? Uh, Cole? You, we locked up the happy box. And uh, the happy box is where we usually go to find candy, right? Yeah, well, we locked, locked it up, and it was interesting because we agreed that what we were going to do is that we were, instead of taking candy out of the happy box, we cut a hole in the top, and we agreed that throughout Lent we would put prayers in there. So I happened to open it up this morning. How full do you think the happy box was of prayers? Anyone who's I think it was like maybe a quarter full. Huh? You, more than halfway? You know what? I got to tell you something. I was amazed. It was chock full of prayers. And that's the neatest thing was to open that up this morning. And uh, it kind of got me thinking about how surprised the disciples were when they went to that tomb and they expected to find Jesus' body and they opened it up and instead it was, it was empty. They found it was open and it was empty. Um, the difference is, is that what I found there was full, full of your prayers, full of the things that you wrote, the things that you hope, the things that you give to God. Um, so that was my Easter surprise this morning. I think the thing that I hope you take away from this day is we need to remember that in our lives of faith, God always surprises us. And God surprises us with great and wondrous things. So it'll be great because not only do we have all those prayers, but uh, after the Easter egg hunt this morning, if you want to donate your candy back to the Happy Box, you're more than welcome to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a word of prayer. Lord, thank you for all these wonderful young people for this special day where we celebrate the greatest gift that we can have. This is the very center of everything that we hope and believe for as Christians. That Christ has died and Christ has risen and Christ will come again. Bless these young people as we gather together today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for coming up.
verses on the communion table this morning are given in celebration of the birth on March 26th of Harper Louise and Hayden Francis Jennerjohn, the daughters of Derek and Jenna Jennerjohn. Harper and Hayden's grandparents are Brenda and Jerry Wick, Michael Thiel and Mark and Tina Jennerjohn. Let us pray. God of love and God of life, today is a day that we proclaim with joy the Lord is risen. And we thank you for the great gift of the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that gives us cause to look at life with joy and with hope and with anticipation. It is indeed you who each year reminds us that all things are made new, and it is our blessing through faith to be part of a new creation. We are especially thankful this morning for the addition of Harper and Hayden to our church family. We ask that you bless Derek and Jenna with wisdom as they raise them and nurture them in the Christian faith. We ask your blessing today on all parents that they may see the joy of creation in their children. As you have been faithful to us, the children you love, let us love and be faithful to those you have entrusted to our care. And let us also remember that life is a gift to those of us who have seen many Easter celebrations come and go. We thank you for the gift of faith that makes our lives of great worth, even if we are in the midst of financial, physical, or mental struggle. Help us today to remember and love those who gave us life and sustained us. We thank you for parents and grandparents and all the loved ones who make up that circle we call family. We ask your blessing on this congregation as we move forward and meet new challenges. Keep us mindful of the sacred mission of love which, with which you have entrusted us. Lord, we pray for those who are suffering in our community and our world. We would ask that you grant them healing and peace. Now, Lord, we take time to come to you in silence with those joys and concerns that are on our hearts and our minds. Hear our prayers, Lord. And help us to know that the promise of Easter is in every day. You have given us the victory over death, and so we celebrate. Help us to follow your commandments to love God, to love each other, and to love ourselves, so that the whole world may rejoice, live in peace, and know of your unbounded grace. Come to you in the name of our resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Would our ushers come forward in service, please, as we worship our Lord with our tithes and our offerings.
us pray. Gracious Lord, as you have made a great sacrifice to, for us and given us the greatest gift of faith and eternal life, so we bring you these humble gifts in recognition of all that you have given us. We ask your blessing that you give us wisdom in their use. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from 1 Corinthians chapter, first, uh, chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel that I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel, you are saved, if you hold firm to the word that I preached to you. Otherwise, you will have believed in vain. For what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And then he appeared to Peter, and then to the twelve. And after that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers at the same time, most of whom are, are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James and to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles, and do not even deserve to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was in me. Whether then it was I or they, this is what we preached, and this is what you believed. May the Lord add his blessing to our reading of his word. The Lord is risen. That's right. I, get a, I, get, I bet I get a better response than this next one. How about them badgers? 
You know, Easter is a victory celebration for us. It's a day of joy. Um, I can't imagine, I don't know about you, but if you sat up last night, you watched a basketball game, but by the end of that basketball game, my heart was pounding in my chest, and I was just overcome with, with just with such a great joy and pride and happiness for, for our team and for our community. You know, that's what a victory is supposed to be about. That's what the way we should feel when we feel the greatest of news. And so you think about today, friends. It is this day. It is this day that we as human beings hear the greatest of news that we could ever, ever hope for. All of our hopes become real. Death has been defeated. Sin no longer rules. We have the promise of eternal life. What a sense of wonder and awe it must have been for those first disciples who must have have felt that in those first days and weeks after finding the empty tomb. We think we feel good because our team won a basketball game. Imagine what they felt like. Imagine how we should feel every day. But you know, the excitement of everything, even that momentous, historic, watershed experience of all of history, even those experiences begin to start to fade. And so the Apostle Paul writes what he writes today. He's writing a lesson to the church in Corinth, reminding them of the centrality and the importance of the resurrection. You see, it seems that early, already in the life of the church, there were those who were ready to, well, start to try to soft sell, spiritualize this decidedly outrageous claim that Jesus, that Jesus had risen from the dead. And so Paul gives the Corinthians some letters of reference. His letters of reference are this. Corinthians, if you have a hard time believing this, then you can certainly talk to Peter or to one of the twelve or to 500 others, the names that I could be happy to give you. And, oh, yes, there's also James. And, well, you know, there's also, you could talk to me. Though I certainly don't deserve the honor, I have seen him as well. And so, friends, it has been since that first Easter morning. The gospel has reached down to us from thousands of years. It has spread to every corner of the planet. The resurrection has been told and experienced in spite of horrible persecutions and, yes, unprecedented successes. And, yes, the resurrection continues to change the world, regardless of how The media loves to play up all the atheism and the doubt that's in the world. It seems like that happens now every Easter, around Easter time. It has happened this way because regardless of the cross and the tomb, people continue to meet the risen Christ. Eugene Peterson writes, The Christian life begins as a community that is gathered at the place of impossibility, the tomb. We as Moravians know that the first thing we do on Easter morning is we gather together. We gather together in a cemetery, a place of impossibility, just as those first disciples did. And it is from that place of impossibility that people can confess, I know that my Redeemer lives. We could say such a thing not because of slick arguments or that we have the smoking gun of a flawless narrative or some sort of evidence made out of DNA. No. It's because someone has passed along to us what Paul is describing here as being of first importance. He died for your sins. He was buried. And on the third day he rose again. For some, this is a delusion, and others, it is a happy myth. For others, it is an ominous threat, because people who hold fast to such things can be seemingly fanatical and therefore dangerous. And unfortunately, history shows that sometimes they have been. But for others, for others, this is the rock on which they stand in this life. It is what fills them with compassion and tenderness for our broken world and all of its ills. It is what keeps them safe and filled with hope 
when the circumstances that swirl around them might cause them to despair. I stand before you this morning confessing alongside the Apostle Paul, by the grace of God, I am what I am, and what I am is an Easter person. This is what I believe. How about you? The tricky thing about being an Easter person is not claiming it with our lips, friends. It's, it, though some may do this, and it is an honest struggle, what a blessing, though, it is that we pray together at that sunrise service. By my own reason and strength, I cannot believe in Jesus Christ or come to him. That is a reminder that faith is always made clearer by our doubts and by our failings. Now, the greatest challenge of being an Easter person is living it. Living it each and every day. To be an Easter person demands that ruthless honesty of taking all that we are and and standing before the impossibility of that empty tomb and seeing if the things that we pursue day in and day out, the way we live day in and day out, whether those things will stand. Or do the things that we convince ourselves are really important, do they really matter? In the face of the greatest realities of life and death, love, faith, and hope. When we surrender to the grace of God to live into who we are intended to be, the impossibilities become realities. But you know, being a person of faith is not as challenging in some places as it is in others. This is Easter Sunday, USA, so we get up and we put on our Easter clothing, and we hopefully will go downstairs and eat a great breakfast, and our kids will hunt for Easter eggs, and statistics tell us that a large percentage of those who are here today will at some point sit down over a ham. I guess that's the number one Easter meal. You know, that's all pretty easy stuff. But you know, friends, this past week, if you were at Garessa University in Kenya, and someone asked you if you were a Christian, you got shot. Events like this should shake us to our very core in order to cause us to look inside of ourselves. I can't help but wonder that how many of those students who lost their lives this past week, how many of them knew what the result would be of their truthful answer, and yet they claimed Christ Anyway, would I be so courageous? Easter is about our standing on what we believe. By the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, you are who you are. And so, who are you? Are you more than a Sunday for new shoes and candy and sugar cake and a ham lunch? Are you about something more? Are you about living like the fact, with the fact that somebody paid a price for you? Are you about loving others like someone who is giving you all the love in the world and everything for you? Do you live that, like you have the hope that you can offer others when they are hurting? What we believe, friends, is how we live how we live in the face of impossibilities. I confess that as I got in my car to drive away from Shiloh this morning, I did it with tears in my eyes because I sat in my car and I, I looked out at my church family as they walked in groups and families and individuals through the headstones there, walking among their beloved who are at rest. You see, they have made their confession of faith and they live for that hope that they will be with those loved ones again one day. That is the gift of the resurrection. That is the gift of Easter. That is the gift of our faith. The Christian life begins as a community that is gathered in a place of impossibility, an empty tomb. It is Easter. The Lord has risen. So let us live for the sake of the world 
to share that good news. That what we are and what we believe makes us Easter people. Amen. We continue with our Easter liturgy on page 92 with the responsive reading. We have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. We do not live to ourselves and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, it is for the Lord that we live, and if we die, it is for the Lord that we die. I do not want you to be in any doubt about those who have died, or to grieve over them as others do who have no hope. What we are saying, brothers and sisters, is this flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. What is sown as perishable is raised imperishable. What is sown in dishonor is raised in glory. What is sown in weakness is raised What is sown a physical body is raised a spiritual body. Then the saying that was written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on the things that are above, not on the things that are of the earth. God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, Make us complete in everything good, so that we may do your will. We're working on us all that is pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
And now may the grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you and abide with you both now and forever. Amen.